Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshik's mainframe channel. This is Moshik's. A couple of months ago I posted a video about how to pass parameters to an assembler program on MVS 3.8 and, uh, and we looked into how this all works and how to handle this in assembler and today we're going to look at how to get this all done with COBOL and specifically we're going to work with the COBOL we have in MVS 3.8 and so I'm connected here to my uh, MVS instance and I'm going to uh, log in here and you will see first of all that uh, my MVS Studio 8 logon screen looks a little bit different than most TK4 uh, logon screen. In fact most logon screens on TK4 would look something like the one we see here but uh, thanks to a person uh, called Rob Prince who is well known in the community because he is the creator of the RPF um, editor and environment which we also have access here. Uh, if you see here RPF, uh, Rob Prince is the creator of that. And it's been around in our MVS 3.8 in TK4 and also in TK3 for a long time. Excellent uh, person, excellent programmer. And he has released a bunch of um, DASTIs that you can just copy into your existing TK4 minus by Jurgen Winkleman and put those DASTIs in and then when you log in you get ISPF. As you know we have a community member called Wally who's, uh, who has been Wally who has been um, uh, developing ISPF for uh, our limited or very old ancient TSO for MBS 3.8. Now most people think that when you say ISPF that actually means uh, the editor. Well no, in our case the editor is still the one written by Greg Price, uh, the same one we've known for a, for a long while. Um, let me give you an example here. All this, uh, this is called the RFE environment as you can see here. Uh, this also includes an editor and if I go in here and pick any any file and open it up into the editor, this editor is RFE edit. And so when we use the, PD, the ISPF environment that, or the, the ISPF uh, compatible environment that Wally uh, created, we're actually still using the RFE edit uh, review, it's called review, the review editor, which is very, very compatible, very similar to, ISP, to ISPF editor. However, when we are in inside ISPF, as we are here, ISPF is much more than just the editor. ISPF is almost like an, a, a, a programming environment on TSO where you can create these panels, you can process input, you can create tables, you can create files. There is a programming language, also an API, and that's really what most of ISPF is, and that's why it's so exciting to have ISPF for 3.8. So finishing the excursion here into ISPF, but if you download this uh, DAST is from Rob Prince, and I will put in the link to his website in the description below this video, then uh, you get exactly where I am, which is which means we still have the 3.8 that uh, TK4 minus update 8 delivers by Jurgen Winkelmann, but on top of that, uh, Rob Prince has installed the ISPF editor and a bunch of other things. Let's see what he's installed. So ISPF 2.2, um, uh, some upgrades to Algol, some updates to COBOL that actually I sent to him. Um, the new RPF uh, version. Uh, there is an editor within the MVS console that allows you to change something if you have some issues with IPLing. Uh, that's very handy, but I'm not going to review it here. Uh, Rex is installed. Bob Pullman does amazing NG38, which I have uh, written about and made uh, videos about for this channel. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, today I'm just going to use this so that I can show you how amazing this environment is by uh, Rob Prince and I encourage you all to try it. However, there's one thing I have to say. If you go and download this um, this disk, this DASDs and copy them into your existing MVS 3.8 TK4 minus, you're most like, more like, very likely going to lose all your files because they just this files just get, getting are going to be copied into place uh, of the existing ones so make sure to make a very good backup before you install this disk installation very easy you just download the, the dasdis and copy them into the dasdi director of tk4 minus that's all so enough about that but uh, let's go and see how we can get uh, parameters pa passed to a cobol program 
So for that, um, I'm just first of all going to go get uh, a skeleton JCL. Let me see where I have one. Uh, I have it here. And as usually, as I usually do in this uh, on this channel, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna do this on the fly so that you I can make all the same mistakes that YouTube typically would do when uh, when writing stuff in COBOL. So let me see here if I have a COBOL program I can just go and use. I don't see here a good example. I just want to get an example of a COBOL program. Mm. Yeah, I think this will work. Yeah, I'll take, I'll just take this. So I don't have to type all the stuff back in. So, um, Okay, so this is the bare minimum to uh, invoke the COBOL compiler and uh, compile a, a program and link edit it and then uh, execute it. So, so we don't have to do all this uh, by hand. Um, okay, so uh, this is actually very good. So we pass it uh, something like that. And that will be the parameter that we want to pass to a to a COBOL program. Actually, this wasn't bad, so let's just do like this. And uh, we're going to call this PARM. And uh, so the way that we pass a parameter to a COBOL program is there needs to be a linkage section uh, in, the, in the linkage section, in the working storage section that will be here. Oops. Uh, what did I do here? Oh, that's fine. So I would do here something like linkage section. And remember, I'm not a very proficient uh, COBOL programmer. I never really did a lot of pro COBOL programming. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. Uh, but I, uh, I think this should work from looking at the manuals. So... Um, and then I guess we write here an 80. You need, um, in the ancient COBOL compiler that we have in MBS 3.8, you do need uh, the line numbers. Um, we should call it uh, arm buffer. And then we say, Zero 05 level, uh, we say arm length, and we make that S9 with a length of 4. I think that should work. Then we say arm that so this will be the length of the parameter that we're passing here we one two three four five six and then um, we need the payload itself the parameter itself will go into parm data which I think will write um, let's make some more space here I don't know how much I will need um, So 200, and then here we would say number pick, uh, and that will be a string. And since we don't know how long it can be, um, we have a filler. We make this up to 106 uh, bytes long. Um, 
Now, uh, the procedure division we have to change a little bit here because we have to say that using arm buffer. So now it's going to use this buffer in the procedure division, and that's where the parameter here is going to get put in by uh, the calling program. So um, I think that should work. So we say 110 uh, main line section. display length so when we they, when we say display of course on um, on MVS that means display into the console uh, since we you know we could actually make a display on the TSO command line if we assign that uh, sys out there but uh, to make it easy we just go to the console and we say arm length because that's the one we defined here, yeah. And then we add one more line. And again, this, uh, let's see what kind of errors we get when we compile it. And then, uh, uh, number of ARM data because we call this ARM data yeah so we put in good here this field uh, here so now yeah this should work and if main nine section we should have main line exit so and this works out nicely with the line numbers 400 is go back so um, identification division we can delete that because we already have it then program ID parm and remember the program ID is actually gets put into the C section so uh, environment division configuration section that's all fine data division working storage section here we put in the linkage section and uh, 01 parm buffer that looks fine 05 parm length picture s94 and then 05 parm data with mm, number pick string six and then the filler string 100 bytes long procedure division and here's the key thing here using parm buffer which is this buffer we could define here and then the mainline section um, display and again this is going to go to the console this is basically going to be a WTO in assembler parm length display payload um, oh here's an error mainline exit I'm tempted to give this a go um, let's uh, See what comes out of this job 006 so you go to the output viewer okay this created 199 cards oh <laughs> zero return code all right this looks good um, Yeah, so length six, let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's correct. And uh, the payload is Moshik, so let's change it and run YouTube. I am more surprised than you are when my stuff gives me a zero return code on the first attempt. So uh, let's run this, 07, again 00, yep, 
so however I see here the E is missing so why oh so I think that's the reason job 8 yes so that's how we pass uh, parameters to um, to, a, to the COBOL compiler or to a COBOL compiled program on MVS 3.8 whether you're running the uh, more modern version of it with uh, ISPF by Wally and um, and so I know that quite a lot of people now are going to ask me uh, when TK4 update 9 is going to come out I don't know I have no idea nobody knows uh, it could be maybe another two years or so until Jurgen finds the time to do it uh, oh here's something about edit as a console editor to make little changes in libraries with a, with a record length of 80 so this is just to change things you need to change to make an IPL succeed uh, I want to look into this a little bit more I don't know who wrote this because this is very handy manual console monitor TSTS version very handy yeah I can I cannot see who wrote this but uh, having the ability to use an editor in the MVS console is uh, is almost unheard of for me um, very very handy anyway so it should this will work the same whether you use TK4 update 8 stock from Jurgen or if you use the the update uh, here from uh, Rob Prince with whom I've been corresponding uh, the last few days very nice gentleman uh, in Holland and update uh, 26 of March and um, so I kind of like what is done here very nice uh, so that's it so I will put the uh, this program in um, in my usual github repository if you go to uh, github slash motion slash mbs I will put it here and put a link uh, to this uh, file here to this uh, PDS member in uh, the description below this video so you can go and copy it and play with it but that's how you pass a parameter to COBOL so having done that the only thing that's left I think is PL1 maybe we'll do RPG if you're interested in that but I think uh, we got this licked uh, this works fine and um, let me see if it change into Z. Yeah, so this works uh, reliably, and there's a very small program, of course, because uh, we really just have small C section with, uh, and then uh, and then uh, issuing the the display, and this is a COBOL compiler that's been around since May 72 and that's the last version of it so it actually started much earlier in the 60s uh, this is level 78 so uh, this is the only compiler we can legally use in the MVS 3.8 it's the old MVT compiler from the predecessor of MVS it works fine for most things the only thing they doesn't have is a, a VSAM um, doesn't know anything about VSAM because VSAM came later than this compiler however there's ways around it and in our YouTube channel we have uh, uh, I have a video um, where um, yeah so that will be this video M173 where we can use VSAM with MVT COBOL compiler with a few assembler routines written if I'm not mistaken by uh, Jay Mosley and uh, Professor Neferlon in this video shows how to do it um, anyway so this is uh, all good and nice so we got this done next uh, installment of this mini series we'll see uh, the PL1 compiler and how we pass parameters to the PL1 compiler if you have any questions please post them as comments below this video you'll find the links to what we're discussing here in the description below this video if you like this channel uh, please subscribe and uh, don't forget to press on the like button in the um, uh, below this video thank you very much and goodbye